All right, boys, it's time for Ask the iPhone, the video where you guys can post in my Discord and ask me questions. And we just did one like five days ago, and I already have like almost 10 questions, so we'll go through them. I'll start with what I think is one of the more interesting questions, which is from Akami, who is new to the uh, Discord. Welcome. Hey, Diaphone, love the content. I'm a 1600, uh, 1700 MR Street Fighter 6 player, and grapplers keep me from getting through the 1700 MR wall. I don't understand how to beat them. Like, what do you do against a block jab, an SPD, and things alike? Do I just guess wildly, keep them forever, or what do I do? So I, I think this is a few part question. Um, I often find that people that are stuck at a wall um, are, it's usually not because of a specific matchup, right? Um, maybe your win rate might be like 10, 20% lower. You should really look at the win rates just to make sure it's not like bias and, and that sort of thing. But assuming it is the actual win, win rates, you have a couple different options, right? Let's say you're just naturally bad against grapplers because some people are naturally bad against certain type of playstyles. I'm naturally not the best against zoners. I don't know. I I just can't perceive the patterns as well as other people. So I pick characters that are good against zoners because um, you know I don't have to play the whole slowly inching my way forward. Maybe I just don't have the patience for it or something. Obviously. Like one, I could just avoid all servers, that doesn't work, right? So I pick a character that kind of fits fits playing against that better. But also, I feel like if you just increase your base skill, like, and just accept that you're gonna be bad against grapplers, there's still plenty of things you could work on besides just being bad against grapplers, right? So in general, that's how I would approach improving is just look at all the other general things you can do. Um, you know, reactions, uh, you know, one player optimization, etc focus on that and even though you might still have the grappler weakness you know you can overcome that through just sheer numbers and that sort of thing that being said what do you do against grapplers right so there's a few things going on here one is like if you're blocking a jab from Gi for a really slow grappler player, you already fucked up. It doesn't matter what game you're in. If you're talking about Potemkin or in Guilty Gear or Ladiva and Grand Blue, like if you're if they're up in your face and they have the advantage, <laughs> like you already fucked up, right? So the goal is to not to get them there in the first place. And obviously that's easier said than done. But you have the advantage in neutral, right? The the trade-off that you get for having advantage over them in neutral is they when they're up close have the advantage so it doesn't matter like how well you guess like their expected value from being up in your face is going to be a lot higher right um than like a normal character so that's just something you have to expect and that's the trade-off for them having worse neutral right so what do you do i mean it depends right you want to rotate your options obviously um, you know, DP, backdash, jump, mash, block, etc. And I'm sure you're doing that. You don't get the 1700 MR without rotating your options. But it's also like, you, you kind of have to be really smart about it. So for example, against Geef, he ticks in the SPD, then that, that situation is really true. But the situation after, it's not really the best for Geef, right? He has to drive rush in and he can't just like drive rush SPD because there's a huge gap. So you have a lot more counterplay and there's a lot more nuance to that after mix up, I guess you could say. So think of it in terms like that, especially in, in the game like Street Fighter, grapplers don't have the best Oki um, after the grab. So you can kind of exploit that. Um, but yeah, exploit neutral and, you know, make smart decisions where you can on defense. But if you're in like jab range, you, there's not very many smart decisions you can make is you just got to rotate your options, right? All right. Ninja Blue asks, hey, Diaphone, I enjoy your content a lot. So I was wondering if you guys have any tips on how to react better. So, for example, I'm really bad at reacting to jump ins. And a couple people here mentioned that, you know, practice and reaction time in general is really good. And I kind of agree. I think practice is the best thing. The one thing that I would suggest that the people here don't are do drills, right? If you're having a trouble at reacting to jump ins, just set a dummy recording, either jumping or doing something else that's hard to react to, put it on a random recording and practice uh, anti airing. That's really what it comes down to. And the more you do that, like obviously you're not going to be 100% anti air, but the more you can get that consistency up, the better you'll be in match. And yeah, a lot of these just come 
with time and with practice. There's not much to it. Like obviously you can improve your base reaction time, things like sleep, good nutrition, etc. all help improve that. But yeah, if you're looking to actually specifically react to certain things, then yeah, you gotta drill that stuff. And I guess you could also say you get better anticipation. If you can get better into the mind of your opponent, understand what they wanna do, then you can kind of anticipate it and it's a lot easier to react to as opposed to looking out for like, five things at once all right this is <laughs> this is an interesting question how do i deal with bad habits and learn matchups without grinding the game a lot yeah that's uh i bro there's no magic solution to getting good at fighting games um obviously there's things that i can help with there's, there's, there's things that can make be more efficient uh but yeah unfortunately learning matchups without playing the game is uh kind of impossible right um What's been giving me problems? Uh, let's read some of this post. What's been giving me problems is how to approach improving at the game at a pace. I feel like I'm improving a bit, but I still feel like I have problems with bad habits. A lot of them, actually. Some of them are strategical flaws. So you know what you're doing wrong, and that's really good, right? So what I would suggest, yeah, I actually think this paragraph here, which is basically saying, I know what I'm doing wrong, but I can't stop. And then this right here, which says, I have stopped playing ranked because I'm scared if I lose, and I don't want to play like people worse than me kind of thing, right? And I think these two are actually more related than you think, right? So when you're scared to lose, you often fall back on bad habits, things that you know work, right? And when you do that, you're not really playing to win. I mean, you're not really playing to learn, right? And I think learning, especially when like you're playing for made up internet points that don't really matter, uh, learning is generally more important when you're playing right now. I'm not saying you shouldn't play the win. Obviously, you want to like learn while you're winning, right? Because taking a bunch of L's isn't fun for anyone, right? But at the same time, like you have to recognize that, hey, if I'm like playing 90% win and the, then the 10% winning and this, I mean, the 10% learning and I'm trying out these new things in match and eventually these will start to become good habits because i'm consistently reinforcing them to match over and over again right so yeah i recommend doing that and can't find people to play longer sets yeah it's usually hard especially when you're like in the s s plus range where it's like you're kind of like intermediate level player especially in like a smaller region like europe it can be kind of hard so this is and to me this is a question about getting over ranked anxiety right and i think the best way to do this is make it all account <laughs> You know, Steam, how you have you can Steam family share. You don't even have to buy the game again. Play on new new account where you have absolutely zero pressure. No one knows who you are. Uh, you don't have any imaginary points to lose because you're basically starting a new account and focus on playing matches just with doing all the things that you want to do. Right. Um, you know what to do. You just have to practice it in match. And the thing is, practicing a match will reduce your win rate in the short term, but in the long term, it'll increase it, right? So if you if you can't get over the, the mindset right away, then try making all the count and um, getting over that way. And gradually, you know, you'll start to have a better learning mindset like whatever or anyone else experiencing this is I when you make a new account, you're going to start at like B rank, right? Notice how much anxiety or like, uh, I don't know. Wait, yeah, I guess scared. So we'll say anxiety. Notice how much anxiety you have when you're playing B rank and A rank matches. Probably none. You're probably going to be bored because it's going to be so easy, right? So, uh, yeah, just think of it like that. It's, it's definitely something that everyone experiences, ranked anxiety. So eventually, eventually you just got to get used to it. All right. How do you play footsies around 6XL's huge range? So <laughs> as you guys know, 6XL goes very, very far. And it's tough to deal with, right? Let's say I want to whiff punish Catalina's 5M. Uh, that's really good, but she can 6-6L me from all the time. So yeah, it's tough. There's kind of like a, it's kind of like an RPS situation almost because let's say you stick out a preemptive poke here and she does 6-6L, then you're gonna, you're gonna win, right? Being in the corner, like it's kind of hard for non Grand Blue players to notice, but just in general in, in fighting games, being in the corner fucking sucks. And more so against 6XL because one of the best ways to beat 6XL is walk back, make it whiff, they overextended, you take your turn, right? Um, just like any anything else in 
the Street Fire, any any games. That's like footsies 101, right? But when you're in the corner, it's a lot harder to deal with, right? So you have to take uh, bigger risks like DPs or preemptive folks or that sort of thing, right? But yeah, the main the main benefit or the the main difference between 5M and 6XL, because you might be like, why would I just use 6XL all the time? Why not use 5M? Because I mean, why would I use 5M when 6XL has longer range? It's because it's a way riskier, right? This, if you whiff it, very, very hard to whiff punch. 6XL, we don't have a picture of it, but uh, yeah, it's a lot. It's, even if you can't whiff punch it because the recovery is not that worse, you could take your turn and they're put in a lot worse situation because you could strike, throw, and, and that sort of thing. Um, Yeah, you could also 6XL them first, like if they're being really patient, right? So like, again, this is all like RPS, but let's say you, you stick out a button to preempt them from dashing at you and then they whiff punish you, all right. Then the next level is they're being patient. You just dash at them. So it's kind of RPS too. So X1, I just now hit diamond rank, congrats. But after watching top players, I don't know if I'm even beginning to think about hitting master. I main Aki and I would like to know if anything you could tell me on what should I do to prep for the master grind. All right, so the first thing here, this is a pretty crazy question. Um, is what is Street Fighter 6 rank graph distribution? I, I don't know what this is actually called. All right, this is 2024, right? So this is a little outdated, but you have to understand there's a fuck ton of people in Master, right? And your top players are not like in in this range, right? Where all most of the Master people are, which is like 1500 MR or lower. They're in this like more than 2000 mr 1900 mr range there's a fuck ton of bad players in master <laughs> so when you watch a top player in master there are no it's not even comparable so the way elo works mr is based on elo right and every every plus 100 elo or plus 100 mr you basically have like a how i say like a double chance of winning right so a, a top player basically has like a 99% win rate against someone that has like 1300 MR. That's still a master, right? So the skill gap is still insanely high. So uh, yeah, I think I think you're watching top players and you're kind of mind fucking yourself, to be honest, because uh, most of the people in masters are nowhere even close to top player level, right? What should you do to prep for the master grind? All right, you hit diamond, right? Um, if you if you kind of keep hitting, you, you'll probably hit a wall, potentially hit a wall, right? Who knows? Just kind of solidify your foundation, which means like play longer sets, play, you know, watch some replays, watch some more top level players play and kind of absorb, absorb knowledge, incorporate th more things into your game plan. And then once you feel like you have several additional once you see visible improvement then start hitting you know start approaching master right you can't you could probably keep going for it honestly diamond one's the hardest one to get over right so it's usually like like it's the same way in any rank system where a lot of people bit at least based on like how they calculate the points they congregate certain ranks and diamond one is like one of those like huge plateaus to the point where like diamond one's almost like the rest of diamond combined so once you can get past diamond one you're gonna get past the rest so to me it's like instead of like burning your wheels on diamond one just like solidify your foundation get, get better at a number of different things and then you know can be reactions can be execution can be combos can be tech can be whatever you want to focus on um that you think will give you the best bang for your buck and then make the grind i believe in you all right anyways uh yeah that was a lot of fun discord is open and link in the comments below if you want to ask me a question i'll if, if these do well on youtube i'll keep doing uh i'll keep answering more of your questions so uh like share subscribe take care y'all peace